Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Well, Universal definitely wants some of that Marvel money, I guess. I mean, it's understandable. It's just too tempting, but it's also so transparent. Universal doesn't have a bunch of comic book superheroes at its disposal, though, so they have mined their intellectual property for the classic movie monsters, and now they're subjecting us to the Universal Dark Universe. Which I know sounds a little bit like ordering a chicken fried chicken, but what the hell, let's go with it. And the first entry in the Universal Dark Universe is The Mummy, even though I believe Dracula Untold from three years ago was supposed to be the first. I don't really know what happened there. And honestly, I don't know what happened here either. Because The Mummy, with its much bigger star, that'd be Tom Cruise, much bigger budget, and way bigger marketing push, is a way worse movie than Dracula Untold. Which I quite liked, actually. I believe it's because of that earlier film's modest ambitions. But here we have a movie that clearly has to serve so many masters. It has to kickstart a franchise, introduce its own complicated mythology, and satisfy the worldwide fan base of a guy who is known as an action star. The Mummy is a film with six, count them, six credited writers, and it certainly feels like six different films. At least, meaning, depending on the scene, it's either an action movie, a horror movie, a creature feature, or a superhero movie, none of which seem to share the same space. One moment it's campy and self-aware, the next it's intense, and then it's world-building, and then it's a zany comedy for a few minutes, and the film just can't quite nail down the tone. The result is jarring, confusing, and even at a scant one hour and fifty minutes, a little exhausting. The effect starts early, after, once we've had a basic primer of who the main mummy villain is and how she came to be, we're introduced to Tom Cruise's grave robber character, in a very rushed fashion. Is he a Han Solo-esque scoundrel? Is he an expert in his field, like, say, Indiana Jones? Is he a civilian, a criminal, a foot soldier, or a man in charge? We don't really know, and it isn't really established, it's just, hey, here's Tom Cruise, now off you go! Then we meet his love interest, a scientist played by Annabelle Wallace, and things get even more convoluted. I say love interest, but really, all of the romance that occurs between these two characters has already occurred before the story started. We're told about it, not shown it, and it really just equates to a one-night stand anyway. Yet, throughout this movie, we're supposed to care, I think, about whether these two end up together. What we get, however, is this bumbling jerk pulling, literally pulling, a much smarter scientist around through a series of circumstances that he doesn't quite understand. Now, there's more to say, but it would definitely equate to a spoiler, so I'll just say that these two characters, whose relationship is central to the movie, we don't really see the moment that they first met. We don't see the spark of chemistry that would lead to something worth caring about. We don't ever see them so much as kiss, I don't think. Look, the movie's an hour and 50 minutes. You could have taken 10 minutes right off the top to show their whirlwind romance. Just to get us, you know, invested in their fate. I don't really know who or what they are at the beginning of the movie. And I mean this literally, we really don't get a proper explanation about who or what they are at the end of the movie. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, The Mummy has the extreme misfortune of coming out just one week after Wonder Woman showed us a well-made story of two admirable people with chemistry for days, whose points of view were clear, who fell in love in a realistic way, and whose romance drove an action-heavy plot forward towards an emotionally satisfying conclusion. In The Mummy, these people do things for reasons that they don't share with each other or the audience, and they respond in ways that are difficult to track, and it's hard to get invested in what happens as a result. Tom Cruise is a great actor, there's no disputing that, and over the years, he has done a lot of things well on screen. In this movie, however, he's been asked to do them all. He's terrified, then he's cocky. He's lovelorn, then he's a Lothario. He's a believer, and he's skeptical. And I'm talking about from scene to scene here. Again, you can sense when some new writer came in and thrust a few pages into the mix because the movie gets a weird new energy that didn't match with the previous one every few minutes. The result is distinctly unsatisfying. You just don't get the feeling like you're being effectively told a good story. Now, earlier I did mention the bigger effects budget, and this movie does do some of the conventional scenes well. There is a pretty great looking plane crash sequence that shows us something new, and a cool underwater chase sequence, but really, almost everything else misses. The comic relief character? Big swing and a miss! The villain? Hey, she does virtually nothing except glower and growl, while other people talk about her and explain her motivations and actions, rather than, oh, hey, fun fact, by the way, this movie does pass the Beckdale test, for what it's worth. Which is not much, because at its core, The Mummy is about a sexy, young, lithe, exotic woman who wants nothing more than to have sex with the much older white male movie star. That sound you just heard is a bunch of people leaving for the far more progressive Wonder Woman. Bye, everybody! Enjoy!
For shame, I say, I award the mummy an empty bag of popcorn. Because other than a few cool action beats, there's nothing to grab onto as a reason to, you know, head out to the theater to go see it. There's better action, there's better romance, there's better comedy and better effects to be found in virtually every other theater at the Multiplex this weekend. Not only is this a particularly auspicious foundation for Universal to try to build a franchise on, it's quite possibly the worst film Tom Cruise has ever made. Yeah. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us by clicking subscribe while you're there. And by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on The Mummy in the comments as well. Let me have it. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and I want my mummy!